welcome to the Flying Winemakers, the series where a new breed of global wine experts jet between harvests to spread their knowledge and share their skills. You'll be meeting the man who pioneered the concept of exchanging wine expertise across the globe. Tony Lathwaite has been working as a wine merchant for more than 40 years. His passion for the grape has seen him develop a business providing wine to millions of happy customers. Alrighty, I can do that for you today. Recently, he's pushed the boundaries of what a wine merchant usually does, and now a small part of his company get involved in making wines. In 87, we went a bit further, uh, and there was this cellar where the fruit was great, should, the wine should have been good, but it was struggling, so we got a good winemaker to come in and see what he could do. Could he raise the game? Well, he did, very much. At first, Tony sent an Australian to France to help with the French harvests. Now winemakers of all nationalities follow the seasons and follow the harvests around the world. This is the story of the flying winemakers and their French harvest during the autumn months of 2005. Leader of the team is Jean-Marc Sobua. He's the head of winemaking for Lathwaite's. His passion for his craft is evident. A French winemaker living in England, he thinks of nothing else but wine. Oh, Jean-Marc is a, a, a legend. <laughs> you don't mix wine, you blend wine. <laughs> but when you blend good wine with good, and another one which is good, usually you end up with something rather good. <laughs> it just has a an artistic streak in him. He just has a feel for it when you meet a good cook. They are somebody who takes exactly the same ingredients as you do, but produces something that tastes far better than you do. The, the biggest thrill for me is to, to make a wine and seeing this wine being extremely popular, uh, people liking it. I like making wine uh, respecting tradition, but also uh, creating new things. Christelle de la Malmaison is the number two winemaker at Lathwaite's. She's astounded people with her focus and her energy. You need to have a confidence, uh, confidence, yes, and you need to be a bit of, uh, of craziness also. It's, it's, it's a big change. Every vintage is a big change. Every vintage you go from one place that you know to a place that you don't know. You challenge yourself every time, every year. For every harvest, there is a plan. Mother Nature will certainly make many changes, but it's still the job of Tony, Jean-Marc and Christelle to guess when and where to harvest. In only a couple of days, winemakers will be flying in from all over the world. OK, let's go through it. Um, Bordeaux. Who's here? Um, in Bordeaux, we've got two people. John Adams, yeah. um, which you've seen before in Ardèche, and... Uh, and Henry Lethway that you've oh, seen before. Yeah, 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 right. And he's, and, he's, and he's, doing, he's doing here. He's doing right. the presbyter yeah. uh, and, uh, and doing some pro yep. pro pro proper little red hope, work hope he gets in Bordeaux. It. Yes, hope he gets it right. Right, OK. Right, All over France, the Lathwaite's winemakers will make sure they get the best grapes to make the best wine. See, we're not bringing winemakers all the way around the world just to produce... Um, you know, basic, basically correct Chardonnay or Cabernet. Um, there wouldn't be a lot of point in that. Um, so they have to be able to add some sort of magic and quirk. You know. Right, down to the midi, Carcassonne. What, uh, who's that? Then you've got Maitena. She used to work in uh, last year in Valvinia. Yeah, yeah, I know. Tony's and uh, well. then she went to Australia and she's coming back for Jean-Marc, I think. She's going to work in Carcassonne. Ardèche, up in the mountains. Up in the mountains. Uh, so this year we've got uh, a winemaker named Zane Katsikis. He's a oh, Greek. Oh, Zane. Yes. yes. You Mad met Zane. him last year. Yes. Mad Zane. Mad Zane. Uh, yeah. He's a Greek American. Mm. He's been working for us last year in Valvinier. He's coming back. He must be enjoying it. So where is it going to start? Where is it going to start first? Where are the first grapes? First grapes. Here. <laughs> OK, then. Here. 
At Laithwaite HQ in the UK, a flying winemaker has arrived for a Jean-Marc lesson in Bordeaux wine. The original flying winemaker was an Australian working in France, and John Adams is continuing that tradition. In one year, in 99, we, done, um, we were very pleased on the, on the flavors, uh, on the, the grassiness. Yeah. What, we don't, what we don't want is overripe fruit. We don't want uh, passion fruit, tropical fruit. So you want your capsicum, your asparagus? Fantastic, yeah. green okay. tea type of thing. Yeah. Uh, but it's not that easy in Bordeaux. Huh? It's really it's essential that I get um, a good feeling and a good understanding of the styles of wine that they're after. Um, you can take one parcel of fruit and take it in quite a number of different directions and make very different styles of wine with it. With the initial briefing over, it's time to travel to France and hit the ground running with a tour of the cellars John will be working with. The Aussie's task is to make the Bordeaux wines, including the Lathwaite Sauvignon Blanc. It's a prestigious job with the pressure to match. Uh, yeah, but they do skin contact, yeah, for the yeah. white. Mm -hmm. But we just just yeah. come and visit first contact for John into, into the cellar. I know the cellar very well, but for, for people when they walk for the first time, it just need a bit of a... So we tasted a few wines, had a look, and now he needs to grow that in his head. And, <laughs> and yeah. they all work, Selah, they all work on the same way, but they're all very different. It's absolutely imperative that you, you establish relationships with the people that you're working with early on and you get it right. Um, you have to realise that I'm a foreigner coming into their country to make wine, to make their grapes into wine for somebody else. If you, if you don't do it right, you can make life pretty hard for yourself. This is Aussie John's first vintage in the wine region of Bordeaux. It's an interesting to place, place to work because of its historical um, position in, in, in the whole wine history and, it, and I think you could probably talk to almost any New World winemaker and, and most of them would like to work in Bordeaux, not, maybe not permanently but would like to do a vintage in Bordeaux. John will be living for the next three months in Chateau La Clarière, the Lathwaite HQ in France and the cellar where the Lathwaite Sauvignon Blanc is produced. In the most southerly region of France, the Midi, Christelle is proving that wine can be women's work. She's introducing Basque flying winemaker Mai Tainer to her new cellar in Carcassonne. It's a lot of new things, new information. We all know the process, but every time you go in a new place, it's a new tanks, new sites, new way of processing things. It's Maitena's first solo winemaking job. Mastering the hot, dry climate of the Midi is no easy task, and Christelle has only a few hours to teach her how the cellar works. She reminds me when I first came in and I had to learn like people and first name and who's doing what and what I'm going to do there, and what kind of wine and the techniques and everything is poor. Alors, à mon avis, j'ai organisé le. I think it's a good winery with a good equipment and I think they, they work in, they, they work all right with good material and, and competent people, so I, I hope it's going to be all right. Head flying winemaker Jean-Marc arrives to brief Maitena in his usual forthright style. I go there and I motivate them, I insist them on the quality, on what, they could, what I want them to achieve. And we talk a bit technically, but I'm trying to give them um, the power uh, to achieve the wine I want them to do. Maya Tainer will be making the wine known as Garage White, and she has to produce 20 barrels for Lathwaite's customers. Just give a and I want to, when, when you go down twice a day, put the ball back into suspension. It's my recipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my thing. It goes really well, very, very well. Yeah. Wine is not a recipe, but you have to do it in a certain way. And I want them to do it my way, to please Tony, and when they're young, they will. Be curious. Go into the tanks, taste. 
And if you think there's something amazing that we haven't asked you to make, give me a shot. And when I come here, we will taste and tell you that's incredible. Oh. And I will liaise with Tony, he's in England. And uh, that's it. See you in two months. Harvest is fast approaching as Jean-Marc and Christelle travel east to meet with another flyer. This time they're visiting the Ardèche and the village of Valvignere. We are in Valvignere, huh? in, um, right in the middle of Ardèche. Early morning, end of August, and uh, we're going to get into the cellar, brief Zane, which is a winemaker, and look exactly, uh, agree with the people and negotiate the way we're going to make the wine. We're going to take the best grapes, hopefully, to make the best wine. Flying winemaker Zane Katsikis is in charge of the Ardèche operation. He's a Greek New Yorker with the attitude to match. Zane is not easy. <laughs> so that's going to be, uh, he's stubborn. He's a stubborn Greek New Yorker. And um, I think uh, we've been working here for 10 years. They like us. They normally um, give us some good fruit. The Ardèche is in southern France, and it's famous for its beauty and rugged terrain, but not, until recently, for its wine. How does the Ardèche doesn't have any prestige of Burgundy or Bordeaux or Alsace or anywhere, but uh, people are very dedicated to what they're doing without having all of that hanging over them. And sometimes being famous and, uh, is a real burden. These people are just trying to do what, they're, uh, what they like to do as well. Jean-Marc's called a meeting with the people who run the cellars. They want to pick the grapes soon, and Jean-Marc's going to insist they wait, or else he won't buy the wine. We uh, arranged to buy so many tons of their grapes. We arranged that we can select the grapes, we can get, we can cherry pick the best of their grapes, the best fruit. We can say when we want to pick, not, not when they want to pick, which is important because a, a, a farmer always tends to err on the side of caution and pick maybe a, a, a little too soon, when, so he's, he's, he's safe from any storm damage, whereas we want the grapes to be as super ripe as possible. And we put our chap in and he does the job his way. And um, it's not his cellar, sometimes there can be conflicts, there can, you know. I'm getting frustrated because I want them. I feel like I've been telling the same thing for, for 12 years and they still doesn't get it. And, and, and I'm just fighting because it's important to fight now to get the best grapes and to let them outside, not to harvest them until they're overripe. And that's difficult. Jean-Marc's won. The growers are going to wait. So that we're all on the same wavelength, and I think, yeah. uh, I think we are now. But we need just to coordinate our efforts a little bit better. That's what we did today. It's always a, you know, the big moment of the year. Is you know what we got? We got, like a, we got PhDs, pre-harvest tension. Tony's driving to Bergerac Airport to pick up the last flying winemaker. This time it's a familiar face, his son Henry. Still young, but he's already worked nine vintages in Australia and France. And this is his first time working for his dad. Well, I always hoped that uh, one of my sons um, would get into wine. In fact, all three are in, in, in the, the business uh, to a certain extent. But one's working in a brewery and the other's working in a bar. But Henry's the winemaker. Uh, <laughs> Henry's task for the harvest is to make a very special wine for Lathwaite's, the Presbyter. The wine is produced using traditional equipment. Henry's in need of a new wine press, and for this, a visit to the local wine shop is in order. And like most men on a shopping trip, it's the big shiny machines that catch the eye. Oh, this is lovely. The, these are the Rolls-Royce presses. These are the, these are the swankiest presses of all. They're very, very expensive. Um, we don't have one. One day, one day. Okay. Yeah, it's every winemaker's dream. Well, it may be every winemaker's dream, but it's not the style Henry's looking for. All he requires are some fantastic grapes and a good old-fashioned press. 
and these can be hard to find. No, they, mm. they used to be hundreds and hundreds of old presses. You'd see them everywhere, but they've all been sold and people have planted flower beds in them. You know, they look nice in people's front gardens, so you can't get them anymore. But, but press is a, is a the old-fashioned wine press is something you're not really improved on for red wine. So it's it's down to business for the father and son team to get a good price. I mean, that little press we saw in there, the green one, it's obviously sat around for quite a while. Who's going to buy that? I don't think it. So I think we could easily get the price down. The tough negotiators walk away. In the Ardesh region, the growers are getting itchy feet. Grapes are ripening and they want to pick. The wine region is in southern France and the further south you travel, the hotter the climate. And that means the grapes will be riper. The Ardèche may be the first place to harvest. And it's vital for Zane that the grapes are perfect or there could be problems further down the line. But it all depends on the quality of the fruit. If you have very good grapes and you're working with people who are uh, dedicated to doing it right, everything just flows and it just feels right. On the other hand, you're involved in a situation where uh, the fruit is not in very good condition because of weather or uh, poor vineyard practices, then it becomes an exercise in, in trying to save yourself. Winemaking has a history thousands of years old, but modern thinking now influences the tried and tested methods. Science is now used for testing the grapes. Here, the, the boys are uh, sampling grapes. This is one of the essential steps in the selection process for uh, deciding when to pick. They're basically treating this exactly like if they brought in a uh, the, the big load of grapes to determine uh, sugar content, meaning potential alcohol, and total acidity, which are the two elements we're concerned about for uh, sampling purposes and for and in wine. The results say the grapes are ready to pick. Zane's still not convinced, so he returns to the original method, a wander around the vineyard. What I'm looking for is good concentration in acids, uh, interesting flavors, peaches and pears again, and uh, basically a balance between the sugars and the acids, which are the two major aspects in uh, grapes. They look pretty good. It looks about, uh, this confirms the sample results from this morning, so uh, to me they're about ready to go. Shouldn't be any problems with this menu. It's official. The French 2005 vintage starts here. All over France, wine growers and winemakers are preparing for their annual performance. They've only got one chance, and now it's time to shine.